In this video, I do a head replacement on a 1999 Eton TXL 50. This particular machine is slightly modified in that it does have some uh, Polaris 50 parts and there are a number of four wheelers, 50cc four wheelers, that do share several parts to uh, the Eton series. So the, the new head that I purchased was specified as fitting a Polaris 50 but I did find that it does fit this particular vehicle. When I bought this machine, the head was damaged, so I've already done this one time. At that point, I had a lot more work to do, so I had taken the engine out of the machine to perform the work. Here, I'm taking apart the plastic so that I can take the engine out to do that same work. As I got further along, I realized that there was a lot of work that I had to do in order to take the engine out of the machine and that there might be enough space in order to replace the head while the engine is still inside the machine. So I stopped disassembling the machine and decided to see if I could work around the frame to get the cylinder head off. I took off both front wheels to get some clearance and put some chocks underneath the frame so it wouldn't be sitting on the ground. Take off the carburetor and plug the holes in the carburetor and also on the engine. On the other side, take off the fan shroud. I found under my fan shroud that all the fins on the fan had broken off. In retrospect, I remember this from the last time I was in here, and although I put it back together without a fan, I realize now that that probably contributed to the failure of the head. Um, in looking back and trying to find this uh, replacement fan, I found that they were not available. And uh, looking again, I did find a used one on eBay for 20 bucks. And although that's pretty expensive for a piece of plastic, it's way better than continually replacing heads. Remove the plastic shroud that surrounds the head, then remove the spark plugs and remove the head bolts. Remove the exhaust bolts and then slide off the head. Remove the retention spring and then slide out the wrist bin. At this point the piston can be removed. Be careful that the connecting rod and wrist bearing don't get dirty. Long story short, it is possible to replace the head in this fashion and if things go pretty well it will take about an hour. Um, in my case, it took more than an hour. The gasket between the head and the block was very heat stressed and had, uh, was very difficult to move, remove from the block. That gasket removal was particularly difficult because there's very little room to work and it's very hard to get a hand uh, in there in order to scrape off the old gasket. There's very little space, so reassembly is quite difficult. But with a little patience, you can get the piston back on to, to the connecting rod. The spring that retains the wrist pin was particularly difficult to get on because of the location. But it seemed that the easy way to put this in was to physically try to get it to hook on the piston and then rotate it as if you're screwing it into the piston. Piston rings can only fit on one way so that they clear an alignment pin. Some dexterity is required in order to get the head past the pistons without special tools while rotating the piston rings and squeezing them so that they align with the pins. There are special tools that help uh, to do this, but I didn't have one and I'm not sure if you can get one that fits a piston this small. Reassembly is the opposite of removal. Good luck.